Hi, my name is Wen and welcome to Game News. And on today's video, we're gonna talk about Counter Strike 2 coming in this summer. Hellblade 2 will push the boundaries of facial animation. Redfall apparently was originally planned to release on PS5, but Xbox said no. Diablo 4 won't have couch co op on PC and the cutest Doom game ever. This and way more in this video. So, without further ado, let's go straight to the news. So, Counter Strike 2 is real and is coming out in summer 2023. Counter Strike fans, the moment that we all have been waiting for is finally here. Valve has just announced that Counter Strike 2 is coming this summer and is going to be bigger and better than ever. So let's dive into the new technology, graphics and that code that will take the beloved shooter to a whole new level. Let's go. The first major upgrade is the new engine. So this new engine allows the games to create dynamic smoke grenades that produces volumetric 3D objects that live in the world. So this means that every player sees the same smoke and the smoke can react to lighting and even passing a player's bullets. So this technology will make the game feel more realistic and immersive than ever. But this is probably gonna hit your FPS a little bit because if the game is generating or producing a volumetric 3D object in game, your hardware, if it is old hardware, it's probably gonna sweat a little bit to do it. So be aware of that. The second major upgrade is the game's new look. So guys, some maps will remain the same in terms of layout, but will receive minor improvements to textures and lighting. Other maps, however, will receive more significant upgrades thanks to the Source 2 engine. So these upgrades include new lighting that produces realistic reflections depending on what the material that the light is reflecting off of. Valve has even rebuilt some of the older CS maps from the ground up, leveraging all the Source 2 tools and rendering features. And finally, the game's net code has been significantly improved. So guys, the original CS code measured time intervals in terms of ticks, which sometimes cause conflicts between actions. However, with CS2, Valve has introduced sub-tick updates that provides each action with a specific time step. This means that the tick rate no longer matters in determining who fires first. As Valve described it, what you see is what you get. So guys, these updates will make the gameplay even smoother, more reliable and less frustrating. And one of the most exciting pieces of information Valve shared is that skins and bands will carry over from CSGO to CS2. This is great news for players who have spent years unlocking cosmetic items on Valve's FPS. However, those who have been caught cheating and have received receive VAC or game bans in CSGO won't be able to play Counter Strike 2 on servers secure with Valve anti-cheat system. Valve has also revealed that competitive cooldowns are shared between the two games. So if a player has a competitive cooldown on CSGO, they won't be able to match make in Counter Strike 2 and vice versa. So this means that players will need to be careful not to receive any competitive cooldowns on either games to continue playing on both games. So guys, the limited test version of CS2 is already available to a select number of players. It offers deathmatch and unreckoned competitive matchmaking on Dust 2, but workshop maps and community servers are not yet available. However, Valve has announced that they will be added before the game's official release this summer. So guys, Counter-Strike 2's surprise announcement came a few days after CSGO broke its all-time current player count record with over 1.4 million players. I mean, this shows that the franchise still has a dedicated fan base, and Valve is committed to keeping the game fresh and exciting for them. So Counter Strike 2 will be released in the summer of 2023 for PC with skins and bands carrying over from CS:GO. So players can look forward to continue their progress in the revamped version of the game. Hellblade 2 will push the boundaries of facial animation. So guys, Ninja Theory has released a brief facial animation demo of Hellblade 2 running in real time in Unreal Engine 5, which is designed to demonstrate just how far the developers have come in terms of bringing the game's character to life. So let's take a closer look. So as you can see in the footage, Melinda returns to her iconic character Senua who suffers from the condition of psychosis. So the demo features a seamless transition between real life capture and in-game character model with Unreal Engine 5 and Meta Human Framework providing an astonishing level of animation details and facial expressions. So this level of detail is unprecedented 
and it's clear that Ninja Theory is taking facial expression animation to new heights with Hellblade 2. So the developers at Ninja Theory have been secretive about Hellblade 2 for the past year, but this facial animation demo is a promising sign of what's to come. So since the initial announcement, the developers aim to place special emphasis on their lead character performance, you know, raising the bar each time when Hellblade Senua Sacrifice follow-up was shown to the public, and this new demo doesn't disappoint as well. And recently, the head of Xbox, Phil Spencer, revealed that he took a visit to the studio to review the sequel and was actually rather inspired by what he saw there, so that sounds really really encouraging. So Hellblade 2 is actually looking so so amazing, man, this, the way Melinda, uh, she's so expressive and the animations seem so real. <laughs> I don't know how to explain this. I was really, really excited when I saw this this video. Man, this is looking so, so good. Of course, uh, we're probably not going to get this level of graphics in the game. I mean, in the cutscenes, yes, but I mean, in the gameplay, we're probably not going to get that. But I mean, this is looking amazing. This is looking really, really, really good. I'm following everything that is coming out uh, with Unreal Engine 5.2. And man, it's amazing. Unreal Engine 5.2 is looking so good. A lot of features, a lot of tools that developers can use now with the real engine you know moving up and implementing a lot of these changes of course the games will get more good looking but not only that the developers now have way more freedom to express their ideas exactly like they want so that's actually really really good going back to hellblade uh, so the first game was a really really good game i don't remember everything that happened there because have been a while since i played uh, the first hellblade so i don't actually remember everything but i do remember that the voices so when you're playing there is like this little voices talk with you all the time so that was really really good and of course that they will do a great job with that in the second game too i'm really hoping to see more news about this game this project is probably gonna take a long long time to come out so make sure to subscribe to the channel i will bring you every single news about hellblade 2 Redfall was originally planned to release on PS5, but Xbox said no. So guys, let's discuss the impact of Microsoft's acquisition of Bethesda on the release of Redfall and why the game won't be launching on PS5. So let's get started. So guys, Redfall, the highly anticipated game from Arcane Studio, was initially planned for release on both Xbox and PlayStation 5. However, following Microsoft's acquisition of Bethesda, plans to launch Redfall on PS5 were cancelled. This news was confirmed by Arcane director Harvey Smith who revealed that the team had originally planned to launch the game on both consoles. According to Smith, the cancellation was a result of Microsoft's decision to focus on Xbox, PC and Game Pass. So this decision was a major change for Arcane as the team had been working on Redfall for over a year before Microsoft bought out Bethesda. However, Smith doesn't see the cancellation as a bad thing. In fact, he believes it might actually benefit Redfall and Arcane Studios by focusing on on Xbox and Game Pass, the game will be more widely available to players and it could become Arcane's biggest game yet. Redfall won't be the first Arcane game on Game Pass, with many of Bethesda backlogs already added following the acquisition. However, this will be the first time an Arcane game is launched on Game Pass, which means players can pick it up on day one without paying anything extra. The game is a departure from Arcane's previous games, as it's an always online game, which means that players need an internet connection to play the game. This feature has drawn a fair amount of controversy, especially as early leaks of the game suggested that it would be heavily monetized with an in-game store and microtransactions. However, Arcane has confirmed that Redfall will not have microtransaction or in-game store. And now, Arcane is ready to reverse course on another controversial decision, the Always Online feature. So Harvey Smith has confirmed that the team is working on an offline mode for Redfall. But guys, adding a an offline mode to a game that was heavily built around online co-op is not an easy job, especially for a game that was previously always online. So Smith language implies that the offline support isn't coming for the launch and may not come at all. But Arcane is at the very least looking into it and working actively towards fixing it in down the line. 
Diablo 4 will have Couch Co-op on PC. So guys, let's talk about the recent announcement that Couch Co-op will be restricted to console version of the game. And let's also take a look at the recent early access beta, which drew over a million players and what players can expect from the upcoming open beta. So let's go. So guys, Diablo 4 is a highly anticipated sequel that promised to deliver an immersive and exciting game experience. One of the most popular features of Diablo series has been the Couch Co-op mode, which allows allows players to team up with friends and family members to explore the game's world and defeat its enemies. However, it has been confirmed that PC players will not have access to these features in Diablo 4 as it will be restricted to console versions of the game. So guys, the reason for this decision, according to Rod Ferguson, the game's general manager, is a technical issue. While online multiplayer is a standard feature for modern video games, implementing shared screen co-op on PC, according to him, is much more challenging. So PC platforms including Battle.net have not had much need to create a similar feature as the opportunities for two people to play a game on the same computer have been relatively rare until recently. Consoles on the other hand have long been set up to allow multiple accounts to be signed in at once, making couch co-op gameplay much easier to implement. So today's console have enough ports to handle multiple game controllers, making them the ideal platform for couch co-op gameplay. So Ferguson also explained that when prioritizing problems they need to solve for the game, solving for two people sitting at the desk playing on the same PC has lower priority when the majority of couch co-op gameplay was likely to happen in front of a large TV. Super well explained, straight to the point, amazing. So PC gamers, we will have couch co-op gameplay on Diablo 4. They could have done it, but it wasn't their priority. At least they are being honest here. In other news, the recent early access beta for Diablo 4 drew in over a million players, exceeding the number of players that developers had anticipated. However, the beta was not without its problems, with some players reporting logging queues up to two hours and server issues causing disconnections. So Ferguson also reiterated the comments he had made to NME early in the week about Blizzard's use of term beta. He explained that the term had become twisted to become marketing beta, which means demo. He reminded players that the next weekend's open beta is still a beta and not a demo, and they should be prepared for some bugs. The cutest Doom game ever is now available. Doom fans, get ready for the cutest game in the franchise. Mighty Doom, the top-down shooter inspired by Doom Eternal's collection toys, has finally been released globally on mobile devices. Developed by Alpha Dog, Mighty Doom has already captured the hearts of Android gamers and is quickly rising to the top of the App Store's adventure category. So if this is your type of game, download it now. So guys, this is all for me for now. Thank you so much for watching the video. Don't forget to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell, and peace.